Good afternoon and welcome to the latest edition of the Business and Technology Show, powered by MyCRM. Um, this afternoon I'm joined in the studio by Mike Spink and Poppy Osmond from the MyCRM team and our guest is Chris Court from Chris Court Associates. Good afternoon. Good afternoon everyone. Um, this afternoon we've got uh, a, packed, uh, a, a packed agenda I would think because we're looking at a brand new topic of social media and how social media can be used in business. Um, why uh, social media should be adopted in business um, and the benefits and Chris is the expert so thank you very much for coming in and joining us um, and uh, telling us all the uh, information. Um, the agenda for this afternoon is a Q&A based kind of we're going to have a discussion about <laughs> why we all use this stuff and you know here at MyCRM we're advocates of it so you know we kind of get it but it, it'd be a great you know idea for you to share all that kind of uh, your findings over the years, how it's changed, because yeah, yeah, we were just having a conversation before we came on air about how technology and the industry has changed and, and just how the web and, and social engagement has changed. Um, yeah, sure. I, still, I still remember the days when email was a new thing. <laughs> uh, I am that old. <laughs> yeah. So today's agenda is Q&A. Um, again, uh, it's Chris Court um, from Chris Court Associates. Chris is a consultant and specialises in social media. So Chris, um, can you tell us a bit about yourself, um, a bit about your background, where you kind of started sure. um, as yeah. a consultant, um, really how you got to where you are today, the other kind of things you do, because I know we all do more than one thing. <laughs> uh, we all have many hats and we sort of start off and sort of say oh you know this is what we do but we can help you with this so if you want to give us a little bit of background that'd be that'd be yeah cool. so uh, i guess first and foremost i am an islander uh, born and bred on the island excellent um moved off went up to london university right. and got offered a job i had the choice of actually going to the met office or having a job back oh, on the island and i thought i went got both interviews passed and I thought, well, oh, I'll come back to the island. Right. So I came back to the Isle of Wight and started with the um, you know, technical support. We've just seen a little bit of technical support. Sure, here. Yeah. <laughs> we, always, we always have technical issues when and we're going uh, live with YouTube. Yeah, and it reminded me how pleased I'm still not in technical support. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I moved away from that, um, started working for a island company, but then uh, I was moved on back onto the mainland doing sure. uh, network infrastructure, but monitoring big, large systems. Okay. Network monitoring kind of stuff, yeah. Um, sort of yeah. So that was very interesting. Um, then sp left that company and went on my own. Um, carried on with the network monitoring, network right. infrastructure, working for um, Computer Associates All right. uh, yeah. and IBM, two yeah. couple of big American companies. Um, we then got put onto a couple of uh, large projects in hot, dusty places that you probably wouldn't want to go to. Mm. Um, I've done a few. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, then ended up, um, you know, leaving that company, left that company, and came back to the island because there was a lot of commuting involved. Sure. We got fed up with the commuting, yeah. came back to the island. Um, always had a hankering to get back to the island, um, and uh, got back here. And I met up fortuitously with Dale Howarth, who many right. of you will know again, yeah. who used to be my <coughs> boss back in '97. All right. So I met up with him at one Is of those events. That IBM connection. He worked. He was uh, the sales and marketing director at CMOC in right. Wootton, who was still All going right. in Wootton. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I worked, that's where I got my first job, I guess, okay. um, was at CMOG. Great, great little company and really yeah. enjoyed my time there. Um, so, you know, I met up with Dale, you know, three, four years, four, five years ago now. Right. Time flies. It does, yeah. yeah. And uh, I told him what I wanted to do and I was sceptical about working on the island, whether it be any, any work for me on the island. He said, yeah, but there's plenty of work. You mm. know, you just need to get involved, get out there and, and start working. So, yeah, I started mm. initially writing websites right. um, because I was being asked for that sort of thing. Yeah. And having written the website for the company on the mainland, I thought, well, what a better place to start. I, I, so, absolutely. And there's, there's so much. I mean, someone sort of asked me the other day or, or said to me the other day, you know, oh, are you a technology expert then? Oh. I was just like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, does, that, does that person exist? You know, it's, uh, it's this, uh, the, the plethora of the way we use technology. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and, and the amounts of, you know, from going back to when I even, when I started, cause I, you know, I came at it from a software engineering, you know, mm. I'd, I'd done my uh, degree and I'd done also done computer communications and data protection. Yeah. Um, and, I, you know, my hankering was for building uh, software, but after about eight or nine years, I, I, I progressed and sort of then went on to do the consulting role, went all around the world with the big American yeah. um, software company and then, you know, decided that 
when I actually well met my wife and moved to the island, I thought, oh, quite like this. This is all right. This is yeah. a much quieter pace of life. <laughs> yeah. um, and was doing the the London commute quite a bit, but then obviously came back to the island to to uh, to, to work on this project. Yeah, but it's, it's, the island is a great 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 yeah, place. It's a fantastic place to work, yeah, especially now <clears> that <throat> connectivity is so good. Yeah, and um, and broadband. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, you know, we're fibred up. I, mean, I think we've got some of the better fibre connections. I've got friends that live in, in much more populated areas and their fibre isn't as good yeah, as ours. Yeah, I think we're very lucky on the island. So. Yeah. But yeah, that's a, that's a little bit of quick quick fire of my background, really. Excellent. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm always interested with you know people that want to start their own businesses or they kind of decide it's time to make that leap you yeah know? and, and it's, it can happen at any age it can happen at any time you think and so what was what was the what was the thing that kind of you know you came back to the islands what was it that kind of convinced you to say yeah actually I'll go I'll go for it now and I'll set my own consultancy I think up. well that, that jump happened quite some time ago when I was sort of working with CMOC and I left CMOC back right. in 97 98 right when you kind of realise that you know you get put on site as a consultant, yeah. which is, is great for a number of years, and then you suddenly kind of get to the realisation that actually they're not really employing the company, they're yeah. employing you, yeah, yeah. and you've got all the skills and the, the technical knowledge, and, you have, and they're not actually referring to the company at all. No. And at that point you kind of think, there's, there's no point, there's no point in working for another company when actually they want me mm, and yeah. the people I'm surrounded with. Yeah. Mm. Um, so we, can, we, we started working together as a, as a unit and formed our own company and right. went on from there. Yeah. But I think, they, as you say, it was, a whole, it was a whole raft of things of why I moved back to the island. Yeah. It, it is the commute, it is yeah. the eventuality of um, all customers you know, within a broad remit are the yeah. same, they have the same problems. Yes. And Absolutely. they kind of, they, but they all think yeah. they're unique, yeah, and yeah. eventually, you kind of get 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 ground down by that yeah. a little bit, I guess. I think uh, <coughs> from from my, but I, you know, it still doesn't surprise me. I, you know, businesses, I find business just as as a concept very interesting. Mm. You know, and you work, <coughs> and get the opportunity to work with so many people and meet so many different people. Yeah, and they've all got their own businesses, and they can be in any sector. You know, yeah. we deal with healthcare and finance and you know, education and, you yeah. know, technology. And you, when you actually kind of grind it down, it's like, well, actually, here's your sales process. This yeah. Is, this is, a, oh, well, ours is different. It's yeah, a, yeah. Do, we'll, do you we'll, sell to people? We'll, <laughs> like, we'll come on to that in terms of social media, where yeah. people think it's all different, but actually, is it? Yeah. Um, but yeah. so, yeah, well, I think I, I was on the mainland working for some large companies, you know, Siemens, mm. EDS, HPs, sure. Fujitsu. And um, they have their processes that were very difficult to work with sometimes. Right, right. Whereas actually now I'm on the island, I'm working with single man companies, yeah. I'm working with SME type companies, yeah. and you can actually go in, talk to them, mm -hmm. understand, and make a difference yeah. very quickly. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's and the that's, outcome you want, yeah, isn't it? And that's very difficult. You get a lot more satisfaction from helping someone to make a difference in their business yeah. rather than just trying to fight a paperwork trial to get yeah. some really obvious done yeah uh, um, I think that's it job satisfaction is it? it's got to be yeah a huge yeah. satisfaction and the lifestyle of the island which I think we'll probably come on to sure <laughs> so let's talk about uh, Chris Court Associates as a business yeah um, and the kind of key things that you're involved with mm -hmm. and how you can help customers of any size yeah is there any, is there any size too big would you are you predominantly uh, SME small business uh, it's, well I, I haven't come across a company that's too big yet but then I haven't worked with many large companies right. they're probably in their kind of 50 right is that 50 employees is probably the, the largest yeah. company at the moment right. Um, and it, right down to one man band and people who are just starting up sure. um, I think let's say when I came back to the island I started writing websites yeah but it was quite quickly where you you, you hand over a website they go, oh, it's fantastic what next yeah and it was that what next, you know, after you've delivered three or four mm. and people are saying, what next? You think, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, yeah, that is, the, the website really is just the beginning of the journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the hub of everything you do online, yeah. Yeah. but it's the beginning of the journey. And I th think people wanted that what next. Yeah. Can you help me with the what next? So it quickly expanded into the areas like social media, the, the sure. blogging side, the video kind of. And it's just such a network of yeah. things to do. You, you can get consumed in it. And yeah. that's where I'm coming from now is that as a small business, you need to focus on what's important to you. Yeah. And if you look at everything else around that you could do, you will just disappear Absolutely. and you won't achieve you'll, anything. You'll spend so, all your time yeah. doing, doing that. I so mean, I'm, I'm more focused on helping businesses understand what will work for them, what does work, how to 
get the best from it, even if it's some things are really simple. I mean, I'm quite happy to say people don't do that. That sure. just won't work for you. Yeah, yeah. And actually get understanding the results as well. Okay. Too. So let's let's unpack the, the, the kind of the social <coughs> media approach. Yeah. You know, sure. what what was the sort of typical you know, let's take a scenario of a but you know, a five man your five person organization, been in business for a couple of years, yeah. they're coming at social media that's sort of brand new to them. Yeah. You know, where do they start? What's, what's, what's I, I think typically now you go to say say that sort of uh, demographic of kind of, of client and they've jumped on it already, um, and they've got probably as many accounts as they could have thought of at the beginning. So they've got Instagram yeah. set up, they've got the Twitter, the Facebook. Mm-hmm. They might have a Flickr account from the old days. They and they've got several of them, um, but none of them are really managed. They might put right. a few things up every now and then. Um, but they haven't got any traction. They don't yeah. really understand the value. They don't see the process behind it. They okay. they know they should make a video, but they don't know quite how, who, it's expensive, what should we do with it afterwards. Right. Um, and it's just getting some more sort of clarity behind it. Is it? Yeah. I think jumping onto social media before you make a plan is difficult to achieve anything. Sure. Uh, so if, it, if you were coming to me, yeah. <clears throat> I'm a brand new business now. I'm, yeah. Uh, I, I, forget, forget that I do this. <laughs> uh, I think, yeah. Help me out. Tell, tell me where yeah. I go. You know what? What am I? You know, I've got I've got my Facebook and I've got my LinkedIn and I've got, you know, I've got a Twitter account. And, yeah. You know, what, what What are you going to advise me to? What What's What's you What's What's your starting right. point? To it, I, I hate this phrase, but it depends. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. There, there's no. Uh, there's no package that you can say right. This This is right for you. Right. Um, but there are there are broad in terms of you know, who Who is your target market? Yeah. Where are they? Um, they might be on Facebook, they might be on Snapchat, they might be on you know YouTube. It, there are different avenues, yeah. and it's it's, it's 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 understanding where they are, and where to focus, sure. and then have a strategy on how to con- connect with them and engage with them on that relative platform. Yeah. So and just just because of your product, your product doesn't determine where the platform is. Because for an example was um, I did some consultancy for um, a mobility company. All right. Who weren't using social media, not right. having any interest to them at all. You think, okay, yeah, maybe selling uh, mobility products isn't social media, but yeah. actually, their target market is not necessarily the 70, 80 year old. Yeah, it's it's the people it? of my age who have parents who are 70 and 80 yeah. year old, yeah. and they'd never thought that through. Actually, it, it's me who has to be buying the mm. products for my parents. Yeah. And that was a bit of a kind of light bulb moment for yeah. them. So don't. Don't consider that I sell this, therefore only the people interested in are there and they're not on social yeah. media or they're the yeah. wrong demographic. Yeah. Uh, it's quite interesting actually because uh, <coughs> you know, just explaining that you said it's that it's, it's understanding your demographic, understanding your, your market yeah. centre. Yeah. And that's that's the key yeah. element actually in marketing for business. Yeah. So it yeah. kind of goes back to like, well actually let's just park the social media piece. That's that's a great output. It's a mm. great there's all these great channels that we can yeah. we can talk about. Uh, but if you don't know what you're talking about or who you're talking to, yeah, then it's a bit pointless. It is, yeah. yeah. It's the same as we talked briefly before we came on air about they are just channels. Mm. You know, it's the same as it's using the county press or the of white radio, or it, it's just another channel. Yeah. And if you, you know, if you're you're just shouting out across all the channels, there's limited scope of, of success you're going to get. But yeah, just forget that it's social media and it's new and we've all got to be on it and yeah. it's a great opportunity. Mm. Just think, you know, who am I trying to connect with, with what message um, and where are they? Sure. Um, yeah. That's the crux of it. Do you find a lot of people, because they've dipped into different channels, end yeah. up confusing their market because their messaging might be slightly different across those channels? I mean, I, I've, I see it all the time where you, you sort of get a broadcast in one media that says something yeah. and then there's something else going on which sort of almost contradicts what they've said in their previous broadcast and, <laughs> and there seems no um, organised structure in yeah, terms yeah. of how we go about it. I'm guessing that's where they need somebody like you to come in and make sense of it and say well actually you need to think about your strategy long term mm. and what you're trying to achieve yeah. not just get something out there yeah, yeah. which is what I see a lot of people doing they just want to yeah. get something out there whether yeah. it's relevant or not. And, it, that, that, that's almost more fundamental as in what message are you trying to get out there, mm. um, let alone the, the channel you're putting it on. But yeah, you, you do have to have, I keep coming back to some form of plan, 
Otherwise, you do get, if you, especially if you have a, a larger organisation with several offices who are always contributing a bits and pieces each, mm. you do get a mixed message, which, which doesn't help because all you're trying to do is get your message across. Mm. And as if you've, you've come across someone that's slightly different here, slightly different there, different logo there, different look and feel over here, a video mm. that's obviously made on a, a phone here and a nice professional one over here, it's very difficult to get mm. that message across hmm. that at some point someone's going to tra- re- recognize who you are what you do what value what your value proposition is hmm. so hmm. Um, but yeah it's quite often i come across companies that have gone across every platform they could possibly think of because they think they should right. or because the <clears> competitor <throat> has yeah. mm. or they're trying to join in um, without actually thinking who the hell's going to do this? Yeah. You know, we, you know, okay, that's your job, Alistair. You're going to update all our social media this yeah. month and then you get busy and it doesn't happen yeah. and then someone in panic, says, God, we've, we haven't done any social media for a couple yeah. of days. Let's get, yeah, something, let's get something out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's absolutely true. I mean, when before Poppy joined, because you know, we've grown as an organisation, so before Poppy joined, I was kind of, oh, it's Wednesday. It must be <laughs> social media day. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, we'd, we'd put some tweets out and we'd, we'd schedule a few things and that would be yeah. it and then I'd go back and do something else. And, yeah. Yeah, and, and Poppy joined us, you know, luckily, <laughs> uh, to organise my life of, of social media. Yeah. Now we, we yeah. can have a whole structure approach of you know, several, you know, consistency, yeah. same yeah. message, use the right branding, you know, mm. um, you know, use use video, use content, make sure that content is saying the same sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, I mean, our, our channels have grown um, mm. and they've, yeah, I know both, you know, Twitter and Facebook had a bit of a cull. Of fake accounts. Yeah. Um, I think that was last year, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, And we didn't actually Several lose too million. Many. Yeah, yeah, we didn't. We didn't yeah. lose we too didn't, many. Yeah, we didn't do do two bad, so that was good. They're real people. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think we yeah. dropped five, six hundred. Yeah. You know, which. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you know, our, like our Twitter is is. Twenty thousand now, so nineteen. Like, yeah, nineteen around. Yeah, yeah that's a great following. Yeah, that's a great so. following. But plan, planning ahead lets you kind of think about this is what we're going to be doing over the yeah. next month and having yeah. that sort of schedule going ahead um, helps you in terms of not have, not having to panic about maybe thought going through campaigns, yeah. product focus, highlights, that sort of thing, without having to think on a day by day or week by week basis, what are we going to do now? Because yeah. it, it's already planned ahead. Mm-hmm. So as a consultancy, mm-hmm. um, and obviously you know, someone who's focused on, on social media, do you have... A kind of a preference for any of the main platforms? Do you sort of say, oh, well, Facebook's actually, I really like that. I, I like what they're doing with their, their targeting or LinkedIn or Twitter. Is there yeah. one that you kind of drift towards and you know, naturally uh, sort of... I'm going to say it depends again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, they all have their pros and cons. Right. Um, I think Facebook is for the numbers. Facebook's got just such a huge... You know, number of people on the platform, sure. but it is really frustrating in terms of what you can achieve organically. Yeah. Um, but in terms of if you're you are prepared to pay, it has some great target focus mm. focusing. And that's, that's kind of a really interesting point actually. Yeah, because we use paid ads, we use organic ads, we yeah. use yeah a mixture of yeah. things. Would your advice be to do that, or would you would you say well actually you know just go organic, or would you say well actually just paying but yeah, because you can do some paid ads and you'll get nothing. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. absolutely nothing. Yeah. Um, but you can do a different type of you can do it like you say a brand awareness on on Facebook, mm. and you'll get real engagement. Yeah. So have you have you got any tips and tricks on that? Or, organic, you need to, you need to trigger that engagement in some way. Yeah. Um, there are various different way methods of doing that. Some will work all the time. Some will be a little bit hit and miss. But if you can trigger some form of organic engagement, they can expand quite quickly. Sure. Um, if you're trying to focus a specific, so when if you're paying for something, there is obviously brand awareness mm-hmm. paying, which you probably won't get anything from, but you will yeah. get hopefully brand awareness. Yeah. If you're trying to sell or promote or you know, get your idea out there for a specific purpose, the more focused those are, the better. Sure. Mm-hmm. And then, because if, if you focus the message on something specific, yeah. you can then focus the target audience. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's if you're trying to sell something quite broad to anyone who'll listen that's really difficult and you can just throw money at that and it'll yeah. just disappear yeah. Yeah. if you're trying to sell hmm. you know car rental it's it, everyone could rent a car yeah, yeah. but if you're going to rent a car to everybody you can throw an awful lot of money at it but actually mm. if you focus your message of 
if you're going to the masters and you'll want a car in this area we've got that so your your message your imagery yeah. your focus your your target audience can yeah. be around those you know uh, those demographics and interest yeah. groups you're more likely to get a result even though it is just car rental sure yeah you're focusing on something really specific but then you're actually are adding value on you onto onto the yeah, it's not such a the product and service yeah yeah which is what we do every day of the week mm. but actually you know, we're wrapping it up in this whole event that's going on yeah. and location and you know, yeah. we're the people to trust that, that, that can do this yeah and, it's and just it, just a, looking at a slightly different angle of what you do yeah. with, even if in a very boring industry you can put different angles on things which yeah. means actually oh now we can focus and target that because i know there's people interested in golf they like travel they will yeah. travel on holidays they they're going to this area or have been in this area in the past and facebook has fantastic targeting mm, uh, moving on to twitter i used to i'd never really got twitter you know five six years ago it was like this what is this all about but actually it's a fantastic platform mm -hmm. because you can connect to anyone you can mention anyone it's you don't have to ask to be friends um, you can target your competitors, followers, you can target hashtag, keyword followers. Mm -hmm. It's not so as in demographics and interests, ages, you know, so that's a little bit not so good on Twitter. Yeah. But in terms of targeting, so people are going to an event, who have a particular hashtag in the event, you've got competitors going, you can target all of those, which is really nice. And it's cheap. Yeah, yeah. Compared to Facebook, it's really cheap. Is it? Mm. Because we haven't really, we haven't ourselves branched out to paid ads on Twitter have you? Uh, I, 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 before well, you, you joined, had, yeah, well, you I did a te you know, I was testing yeah. the different platforms, you know, similar in their kind of, you know, what, what does this do for me? Mm -hmm. and, uh, we were tracking the, the results from Twitter. Yeah. And we found that there were just kind of <coughs> certain points where we were getting a lot of traffic, but it seemed to be not real traffic. Okay. So we were getting attacked by, you know, <laughs> I just said, right, switch that off. And we were constantly going through trying to block things. Yeah. Um, I think it's... Possibly in the bot days. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. I'm, I'm going back kind of three years now. Yeah. When yeah. You could, you, you know, because I was, before we came on, I was, I was, I was talking about mapping and mm. putting data on maps. Well, you put all your Twitter yeah. responses onto a map and yeah. then you suddenly get these like burning hotspots <laughs> of like you know in a thousand him. hits in, in in one minute you know, yeah that's not real yeah <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah like, you can see all that but. yeah so that's 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 kind of really good so we haven't we haven't actually kind of progressed that you know, yeah we, we tend to do a lot of marketing via um either google mm -hmm. um either you know kind of search and youtube yeah um so we'll post video and, and clips of video mm -hmm. um and we do um facebook um, yeah because We've got a, our Facebook page is about twelve thousand. Mm. So we, we've got a we've got an engagement on that. Okay, you know? yeah. I mean, it's taken yeah. a long time to build that up. <coughs> um, have you got any tips on, on actually getting followers? Um, is that yeah? Because uh, I guess you you kind of go and work with an organisation and they go, oh, we've got a hundred followers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's all of that. Um, I think it, it's particularly in Facebook, it, the, the organic engagement can be so low. Mm. One of the first tips, if you kind of go up to you know, a company with, on the island, for example. Um, is to look at the groups that you can also belong to. Right. You know, as you know, there's there's probably several business groups that you mm -hmm. can belong to. Um, there's several, you know, depending on what your business is, several other areas of interest. There's so many different community groups for all all over the world, really. Um, if you can share your page posts into those groups, is a is a relatively quick and possibly free way of getting engagement and right. people who like you. As long as you're not blazingly trying to sell or spam yeah if you've got items of interest and engagement then sharing those into groups that i have will have that kind of sure. people you're looking for that's a very good way of getting people to to pay interest to you right. and that's free okay. that yeah. just takes a bit of time of um, finding the groups <coughs> joining the groups getting added to the groups and then sharing people in sure just going to take a break with the questions a second yeah, so we've got carl, well, we've got carl, carl, carl uh yeah, and Carl is he's asking a couple of questions as well. We've got quite a few people uh, watching as well. Yeah, of so yeah, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a good thing. Like. That's a good thing. Good thing. Um, so Poppy, did you want to just pick that up? And yeah, well, going back to Twitter, um, Carl says he he did use it and it was um, extremely lucrative in uh, in terms of his business um, in the early days. Um, but he says it's not as good as it could be, which you know. We don't know that because we haven't done it yeah, recently, but you know you may mm. be able to to expand on that, Chris. But yeah, I mean I, I'm not sure what he means by extremely lucrative, but I know that 
I've run several campaigns for an island organisation who mm-hmm. do global events. And as long as take back to this plan thing, as long as you think, well, we've got an event three months away, start now yeah. with different phases of what you're going to be doing on, on Twitter, for example. And you can say, you, the great thing about Twitter is you can engage anyone. Right. So if you have a plan three months out, you can engage with people who are going, you can engage with influencers, you can engage with um, journalists, you can get people yeah. to your stand so you don't just turn up an event and stand at your stand waiting for people to come. You've already had three months of planning about it and then sure. you, know, you can get people there and you will get, we've had journalists who will say, this is great, can we do an article on yeah. you? Yeah. And that's gold dust. And would that yeah. be all, would that be all organic or would that, would you, would you mix that up with? That's a mix. That's a mix. That's a mix. So okay. I say the vast majority of it is organic. Um, but you know, the, the week before the event, you probably want to do some, something that's paid around mm-hmm. competitors, around people using the event hashtag, because that doesn't really pick up until a few days before the yeah. event, really. Yeah. Um, and that's a very easy way. Very, and you know, you're talking sort of a couple of pence for an engagement yeah. rather than Facebook, you're talking maybe a few pounds, maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I would say, yeah, Twitter could be better, but actually, if it is, well, I think you know, you know, if you look at the you know, Facebook, you know, only a year ago, you know, it, it, their targeting has improved hugely mm. uh, with the different types of ads, and you know, uh, and when I very the very first time I used Twitter, it was just literally add some hashtags and off it went. <laughs> you know, it's just yeah. like you just started, you know, messaging the world. So. Um, I think they're all improving, and I think you know social media is still new. You know. Yeah, I think they will all change yeah. rapidly. I think Facebook particularly will be very different in two years' time, just because of the way it's gone, the way people like and use it. Yeah. Um, it's a very different demographic to five years ago yeah. who use it. You know, all the kids, and the, and those, kids have gone. The, 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 well, yeah. it's not you know, the kids have grown up. Well, uh, since the parents started using yeah. Facebook, they didn't have to do that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And then businesses took over. Oh, we can, we can, we can yeah. sell to the parents. So I guess um, part of the skill also, you mentioned uh, this a moment ago, is, is getting your message right and not being too blatant in terms of the selling. Yeah. So I yeah. guess one of the common mistakes, uh, especially from salespeople, marketing yeah. people, maybe who are a little bit overly ambitious, is to start doing too much pitching and too much selling and you'll get yeah, you'll get a very bad reputation very quickly for that and it'll always yeah. work against you. There are products that you can sell straight off Facebook. You know, you do see and think, hey, that's neat. Mm. You know, I, I'm in the position where I would like that. Mm. Um, but I do say that very, very few people, in my experience, start their buying journey on social media of any sort. Mm. You don't go looking for a product or a service, you know, a laptop or anything like that on Facebook. You just mm. don't start there. Yeah. Yeah. But actually, if you've got a company who does sell computer hardware, mm. who are so constantly feeding a message of, hey, we've been doing this, this is what we do, look, we've just sold these, this great company, we've mm. set all this up. Eventually, you've taken, the, you've started everyone on this journey before yeah. they even know they're on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So at some point, I think, I need a new laptop. Hey, I'll speak yeah. to these guys because yeah. they keep popping up. Yeah. So yeah. they've, they've, you know, it's the same, like the marketing message, you need to see something seven times before you pay any attention yeah. to it. Yeah. I'm not yeah. trying to sell you something, I'm just saying yeah. in the back of your mind, I sell laptops. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a poor example maybe, but yeah, no, if you're overly and yeah. yeah. saying, you know, it's, it's 599 today, come and buy it. I, mean, I just want a laptop today for 599, I'm not interested. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they won't get engagement and then they'll, they'll so go. So if, if you're talking to, if you're talking to a customer, mm. customer, client, and they, yeah. and it, you, you, you'll be happy to say to them, that's a bit too blatant, and you might want to sort of reel, a bit, yeah, reel back a bit on the It on goes messaging. back to what Alistair was saying about having a plan. So like this morning, for example, I'm working with a, the company and we, we created a basically probably a, a, a 60 day plan of messages that are going out over the 60 days, mm. which are kind of your steady state that's going out all the time, so you're not panicked about stuff. But there's always moments in time where actually you might have a great deal you might have sort of something's happened, something you know that that you will want to interject into the plan, mm. and those might be a sales message. Mm. They they might be blatant. You know, there's nothing wrong with being blatant if they've got something that's really worth being blatant mm. about. Mm. But mm. don't just go blatant, awesome. blatant all the time, all the time. Yeah. You have to have this steady state of actually mm. informational, interesting, engaging kind of content. Mm. Yeah, that, 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 something that's of value to your yeah that, your yeah. viewing public rather yeah. than just blatant in your face. Yeah. Buy, buy, buy. Yeah. Because yeah. no one's there to buy stuff, really. No. Right. no. Um, 
It, yeah, it's about education as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely. Yeah. If you are researching or something popular, that's interesting. I'll, yeah. I'll come back to that. I mean, I remember our buying decision changed with all of our equipment here. We have it custom built, mm. um, and that only came from I was watching. You know, I was getting a, a alerts on on sort of Facebook and and Twitter and things, and then that particular company ran a TV advert, and it I, I watched the TV advert. I need to buy their things. Yeah. It, it didn't mean it was any better than the PCs were any better. It yeah. was just like they're on TV. Yeah. So, uh, it's just like so I, I, you know, that's that was influenced our sort of yeah. buying decision. Yeah. Um, and I think I think media marketing um, has changed a huge amount. I mean, mm. we can go back only four years, five years, where email marketing was the everybody did email marketing. Yeah. You know, you just sent a message. So now, you know. I hate to say it, but email marketing, it just seems to be, you can do awareness, but mm. you'll never sell now over email. Yeah. Um, it, it, yeah. A lot of companies still email, and we, oh. I do a lot of emailing yeah. with companies, yeah. um, but it's the focus has changed. Yeah. I um, think it's you want to yeah. draw people back to the website where you can control what's going on, yeah. and you can monitor what's going on. I'm sure yeah. you've got analytics and all yeah. sorts. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But until you get them back to the website, you don't really control what they're doing. Yeah, um, I mean, there used to be an approach where you could send an email and say, hi, do a trial today, and we'll do da 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 da, da. You know, Do that now, and you just get unsubscribed. Yeah. <laughs> so, Tumbleweed. Yeah, give, 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 me, give me something, you know, give me something why I should be interested in what you're doing. So yeah. We do, obviously, uh, kind of e-shots and, and sort of say, hey, this is our latest video, this is our latest blog, this yeah. is our, you know, and I do want to get, kind of get onto blogs and, and video and, you know, yeah. the best type of content because you know content was originally kind of text based mm. you know and then we kind of all moved on to a bit of animation and a bit of pictures and you know and now we're all kind of you know pushing out video and stuff do, yeah. you, do you have any uh, sort of um kind of guidance on that do you think video is uh, is, is yeah video is always it? engage always yeah. engage. i think there is a little bit of tiredness coming into the video engagement but I think as an organisation or a business or a charity, videos really do engage, yeah. and, and they don't have to be as expensive um, as, as they. You know, I think people do think there's a big lot of time and expense involved in creating a video, but you know, we've got locally we've got some great businesses who yeah. are, are, are you know, not expensive and they produce some really good stuff. Yeah, and I think we've got a couple of them coming in as well to do a, a yeah. visual show. Yeah, so. there's uh, there's <coughs> Matt at Nosy Design. Yeah. I, I yeah. really like the work he does. Uh, there's Ruben at Glass House Productions as yeah, well. Really he did like the LinkedIn logo. Yeah, local. Yeah. really good. Um, yeah, and it's 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 really nice, slightly different, not too corporate. Um, and the prices are certainly accessible um, and it does engage, videos always engage um, and they can be used for multiple purposes as well um, so yeah I would definitely look at the, the video side. Excellent um, so we're, we're nearly halfway through okay. um, and we're pretty much on time because we started a little bit late so um, you've been in business for how many years doing the social media now? Gosh, Four or five. there's a thought I think it was about 2013 I came right. back to the island and yeah. um, started on, on the, yeah. the digital marketing yeah. kind of, yeah. Um, that involves you know, social media, websites, Google ads, those sort of, uh, those sort of uh, I remember we met a couple of years, maybe three years ago now, um, at one of the expos on the island. Yeah, um, yeah that's Chamber Expo. So that'd be 15, 16. Yeah, yeah, so I think it was about 2013 where okay. I came back and So thought, five years in. Yeah. Um, what's the next? What's what's the next big thing? What's the uh, what's the next five years? What's the dream? Where where do you want? What's to get the dream? To? Um, an army of an army of Chris Court associates. <laughs> well, I, I don't I don't want to build an army. I think the, the last company when I was on on the mainland, we we didn't build an army quite, but there was quite a lot of people. And the sort of when you get to a certain size, you kind of get rather consumed in looking after people rather than actually delivering yeah. delivering customer services, um, which is uh, which is uh, grinds you down a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm not building an army, but what I do find is that a lot of customers that I've started working with five years ago, I'm still working with now, right. and it's become more of a, more than just websites or social media or AdWords. It's become more of a there's so much out there. Yeah. What do we need to do to get the best for our business? Yeah. So it's more of a guidance, mentoring, consultancy type role than just Excellent. let's let's focus on this. So would that be a kind of cup coaching role as well? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's, uh, it's with with uh, a lady yesterday who just said, I, "This is what I want to do," and she mm. wanted to do so much, 
Um, she said, can you just mentor me and yeah. what, what to do? And, you know, because you can do a lot, but there are definite steps to do it. Otherwise, it's so you just get buried. <coughs> um, so, yeah, I, I want to move to... There's an awful lot of noise in the market of social media. Um, there's a lot, lot of people who will manage and create accounts and look after them for you and yeah. do your posts for you. Google AdWords less so because that's quite specialist. Yeah. Um, I still do quite a lot of that. Sure. Um, websites as well. I mean, I, there's a big difference between a good website and a bad website. Mm -hmm. But I think from a customer point of view, they don't see the difference between a you know, fifty pound website and something that's more expensive yeah. because it's more technical. So there's, there's, there's a lot of noise in those markets, and I want to make sure that I can work with companies to help them understand. Sure. Where where best to put their efforts for their businesses? Yeah. And you said you were saying you caught up with Carl, didn't you? At the, at the last yeah. event. Yes, yeah, the Smart Island Live, yeah. which is a good event. Yeah. A good event. There's some, yeah. yeah, there are some great events on on, on the on the island. And yeah, more and more happening. Um, I'm gonna uh, let's just move on a bit because um, obviously this one, like yourself, you know, we're based on the Isle of Wight. Yeah, population hundred and something thousand <laughs> working population 33 34 something like that yeah possibly yeah depends yeah. on the weather yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of businesses obviously when they're when they're in the startup phase when they're when they're um, you know, just getting going you know a lot of people tend to uh, start up a business in a in a, a densely populated area yeah you know, so they go I'm starting a new business Let's go to Southampton or let's go to Portsmouth. Yeah. You know, I, I spend a lot of time in Reading, and you know, there's probably more people you know, down the yeah. road I lived on than there is on the on the island. Or it yeah. felt like it, you know. And, and I think Mike can be testament to the amount of traffic now in Thames Valley. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. Mm. Everywhere, everywhere's a traffic jam. Yeah. yeah. Um, so really, you know, helping, yeah. How do you actually kind of bridge that gap to say, well, actually, yes, we're on an island mm. and we offer all of these services and there's you know, connecting businesses locally. Yeah. But I assume you work off island as well. Yes. You know, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. How, how do you do that? How do you how do you bridge that gap? Um, I don't think working on the island is any form of barrier to working anywhere in the world. No. Um, particularly with the connectivity we've got. Certainly in in the realms that I work with, I I have. Several clients who I've never met right. um, that I got through word of mouth or through networking, yeah. um, and I've, I've never met these people in uh, in Wellingborough. I do Google AdWords for. There's mm. a company in Sweden. Uh, there's companies in Bulgaria yeah. who we've just got to know through various various mutual connections. Yeah. Um, you don't need. To, I don't need to be there yeah. um, to be and, able to and, work with those companies. Yeah, isn't that a great advert for the location that we're in? Because I know. Yeah. Locally, the council obviously there's a big drive for the the kind of smart island, the digital island. Yeah, you know, it's stuff that doesn't need logistics. You know, yeah. can be based on the island. We've got great internet connectivity. Yeah, you know, one of the things you know, we have customers in twenty three, twenty four countries. Yeah, you know, from the Isle of Wight, as you've just said, you've got customers in Sweden yeah. and Bulgaria, you know, mm. and, and and others that have come in have said the same story. You know, yeah. we, we can all do this because. The internet is empowering business. Yeah, um, and I think it's I think it's just fascinating to kind of as you talk to people, they sort of say, "Oh yeah, actually we do that as well." You know. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. I think there's a lot of companies that, that work work globally from from an island base. Yeah, um, I think it's it's a great thing that you know White Fiber are making the uh, this big push into the oh, connectivity for the yeah. island. Um, you know, it's going to be a few years coming, especially to the West White, maybe. Yeah. But eventually, we'll uh, we'll be together on that. Yeah, uh, it's quite it was quite funny actually. I was watching one of their presentations. Um, I can't remember what the event was, and they were sort of saying if you split the island in half, you know, on this side of the island, there's sixty five thousand yeah. properties, premises, yeah. um, and on this side of the island, there's seven thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the challenge. How do we get? How do we fibre that half of the island? Mm. Than that yeah. Dot? Hey, this is really easy. You just build sixty three thousand houses on that side. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. No, thank you. <laughs> I think we'd rather be without fibre. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. I, wasn't even, I, just, I just thought it was funny the way that the split was. Yeah, and it, it wasn't like down the middle either. It was kind of yeah. slightly to the it east. Was, it was yeah, slight yeah. a stark difference between mm -hmm. west, west and east. Yeah. Um, but it's a great initiative, and uh, yeah, really looking forward to. Uh, yeah, no, I think through. it's great. I mean, yeah. we, we, we've obviously got it here. We've got dedicated fibre to the kitchen. 
perfect. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, we haven't got the new fibre, but we've got the old fibres in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, so outside of work things, you know, um, do you, is there any activities you, yeah, you really like going surfing? I mean, we're yeah. actually living on an island. Do you sail? Yeah, 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 I was sailing last night. Right, okay. uh, The Island Sailing Club Tuesday night series. Yeah. That's just started up last night. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's one of the primary reasons I came back to the island. Right. Very first, when I chose CMOC rather than the Met yeah. Office, was that actually, you know, I could finish work and go to the beach and go windsurfing at the right. time. I now do a lot of kite surfing. Right. Um, surfing, sailing, and I've just taken up paragliding as well. Cool. So, uh, yeah, if, I think if you're going to live on the island, yeah. you need to make sure you use the island. Yeah, and have lots of expensive hobbies. Well, <laughs> they may be expensive kit, yeah. but they're free after that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah, it's a one-time investment. Yeah, it doesn't cost me yeah. any money to yeah. go surfing. See, see, that's unlike my I've got two children, um, and they, they spend a lot of money. Yeah, yeah you like, might as well spend that's it yourself. Just, that's just consistent, they just keep spending it. They just get older and spend yeah. more money. The, the toys get bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just saying, uh, until they're 18. Yeah. <laughs> Love them to bits, but they're leaving. Yeah. Um, that's what you think. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> what I, that's what I say. Is that the dream? <laughs> that's, that's, never, that's never happened. It's still there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's so, that's, that's great, because um, I'm not a sailor type person. I haven't been on a boat. I've got friends that have got big boats, um, mm. and um, proper, proper sized big boats, um, and I still don't go on them. No, <laughs> no it's a, you either love it or hate it, but yeah. yeah well, so. I, I don't think it's, it's just, I, I, you know. It doesn't it, appeal to it you. It doesn't, it doesn't, <laughs> I just, yeah. I, I don't mind going sitting in Monaco on a on a on a on a, on a sun seeker, but you know so that's that's probably about as far I as my sailing. Yeah, yeah, that's probably as my uh, as far as my uh, sailing capacity goes. Um, let's talk about events for a little while because I know okay, yeah. you've uh, and I came to the the, the first event. Um, you were instrumental in setting up the. I think it's fair to say you're instrumental in yeah, setting up the yeah. LinkedIn local. Yeah. Um, can you unpack that? Just tell us a bit about LinkedIn Local, how yeah, it's, um, LinkedIn are driving that, how you got involved with that, and how you brought it to the island. Yeah, the, the, I, I saw the LinkedIn Local events taking place around you know, Southampton, Bournemouth, uh, Portsmouth have a big one, and I thought, well, we could do this on the island. Sure. So uh, there was an organisation running it called LinkedIn Locally, and uh, they kind of gave you, went through an onboarding process, so you knew the, the rules, and yeah. you know, it's all fairly light. Yeah, you know, it's not hard and fast, but there's yeah. rules rules that you should follow, um, and got authorization from them to run it on the Isle of Wight. Right. Um, so we had our first event. I can't remember back in March. It was. And yeah, we it had was about a, Yeah, we had over a hundred businesses turn up um, at the Slug and Metis in Newport. It was yeah, yeah a, a success. We had a lot of fit, really positive feedback. Some things we can improve on. Yeah. Um, since then, interestingly, LinkedIn, the organisation, have pulled the rug from the LinkedIn locally organization they were just a charitable kind of oh, right. okay. and they've taken it over completely right. so they've, they've a new set of rules right. and new right. branding right. Um, which we have to follow yeah. um, and we're, we're running another one on the 9th of may right um in ride castle uh, between that's five, on the seafront isn't yeah it, it is yeah, yeah down on the yeah, esplanade yeah. uh between five thirty till 8 right um and we've got quite a lot of interest of companies coming from the mainland as well so uh yeah it, it's um we're it, we're looking good on the numbers, and yeah. we've only just kind of released the, that. So uh, I think we'll definitely be there, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'll yeah, it's great, and, it, and it's open to everyone. Yeah. And I know it's, it's LinkedIn focused, and you can you know, obviously get more information on LinkedIn about it. Yeah. Um, but it's it, you don't have to be a member of the, the chamber or any business association. It's for everyone to come along. And we sure. had a real good mix of companies there. Yeah, no, some faces on you and some people I'd never yeah. met before. That, uh, you know, when we came to the first one, we were just thinking about setting up the business show, uh, yeah. business and technology show, um, because it was just about having, giving island businesses that opportunity to, yeah. to come in and just talk about their business. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that took a bit of time for doing, but it, and it'd be great, you know, I'm, I'm going to come to the next club and see if I can, you know, invite other people to come yeah. in. You know, it, was a, uh, it was a good event, and I'm also, will shortly be announcing, I'm running my own event on the uh, 15th of May, which oh, will right. be at Lakeside. Oh, okay. um, focused around sort of around what we've been talking around today about okay. digital strategy planning and how to you know set your own strategy with sort of four or five simple steps sure um, so that'll be <coughs> released you know the, the, um, the, the next week oh, right. the time comes around quickly so yeah, yeah I'll let you know the details yeah yeah we'll be coming to that one as well I mean, even if we stand at the bank yeah we do that <laughs> <laughs> 
That'd be great. Um, right, where are we at to? So we're up to question eight, so let's have a look. Um, right, is there anything else that you think we haven't covered or you'd like to cover? Because obviously technology and services and social media is a huge thing. We could probably yeah. talk for hours. Yeah. You know, we could talk about Google and Google AdWords and yeah, yeah. display networks, all of those kind of things. Um, and they're all there and they all cost various amounts of money. But is there anything you'd sort of say, well, actually, if you were just starting out, the key thing, apart from give you a call, obviously, <laughs> yeah. um, is, is you know, go, go and look at this, go and, go, and, go and read about, you know, if you want to do video, go and read about you, you know, yeah. YouTube Academy or if you're in the Facebook world and you're, you're looking for consumer or the Snapchat world yeah. you know, and you, you, that's your consumer, what, what is, can you give that sort of nugget of... I think the really before all of that, I think uh, people think that um, social media, websites, AdWords, email marketing mm. is all new and has to be new and is all different and there's different approaches. I think it comes back to what we were talking about just before we started. Sure. The concept is the same. Mm. The whole marketing, the messaging, that has to be right before you even get to the platforms. Right. So good advice. Yeah, mm. take, sit sit back a little bit before you jump into the whole kind of this is what I'm doing. I've set up this. I'm going on this. Mm. I'm on these platforms. Just take a step back and say, what is the yeah. core message I'm trying to yeah. get across? And where do I want to get to? Yeah. Well, what well, am I actually going to achieve? Who is it? And do yeah. I have? Because uh, the other thing that I often come across in sales and dealing with talking to people about implementing systems, CRM systems, is determining what constitutes success because a lot of yeah. people actually do it and then they don't really measure what it did no, and why yeah. it actually is it a success or not yeah so the same goes for social media you should have some idea of what is what does success look like and how am i going to get yeah. to there yeah and that's probably an area that you could guide people on it is, and well, advise that, them that's on. part of what i'll be covering on the, the event on the 15th of may it's not you know it's about what exactly what you said what is success what does mm. it look like it might just be one person contacted mm -hmm. you that might be your success criteria it may mm. be and a certain number of sales or it might just be brand recognition or five more likes it could, could be anything but it, if you don't set out with an objective mm. you're just following following along and continually going so yeah mm. my, my one piece of advice was step back from the platforms yeah. and determine what you're trying to achieve which, which is quite interesting actually because anyone who's involved in business coaching or helping businesses not just with the technology we do I mean we're, we're very similar to you we, we kind of advise as well and we go for a consultative kind of have you thought about it, as Mike yeah. was just saying um, it's about planning yeah plan what you do you know, yeah 30 days 60 days 90 days this is what we're going to do this is the end goal yeah. You know, let's let's have focus. This is the message, and then then go for execution. Yeah, and don't try and execute on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, so, no. yeah. You know, just, you know. Yeah, it's very easy to get sucked into. This is what someone else is doing. That looks great. I'll give it a go. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, it it's, it's won't work. Yeah. It just won't okay. Work. <laughs> we're going on to the times moving on. We're going. We're going yeah, on sure. to the, the quick fire end. Quick fire. <clears throat> Gosh. Um, so um, this is really just a, a kind of um, a chance just to ask those kind of key, key questions and you know I'm going to start with have you got a favourite film and why uh, I had to think long and hard about this one but right. I think it always a go to film or trilogy of films it's got to be Lord of the Rings right. first book I read right. properly and it's just just a great thing you can just sit down and watch Okay, we've talked about your leisure activities Yeah. do you have a favourite sport it's going to be the water sports yes. side of things, kite surfing probably. Yeah. I really do like surfing, but yeah. kite surfing is... That's quite one scary, one. kite surfing. That's, isn't that where you can go up about 30 feet in the air? And yeah, 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 you can and do. And more, I think. I've yeah, seen yeah, some and extreme more, yeah. kite surfing. I don't potentially go that high, but I like waves more than height. Right. <laughs> um, can you recommend a good book for business? Yeah, I've... Um, Went on holiday last year. I get all, I've got Audible, which is a great, great system to use. I've um, listened to a book called Oversubscribed oh, right. by Daniel Priestley. Very good book, um, and that, that's sort of uh, the foundation of what I'm trying to achieve in my own business at the moment. But oh. yeah, great. That's a very good book. There's okay. lots out there, but I would recommend having a listen of that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, what we'll, do, we'll we'll tag that at the end of the video yeah, great. As, as well. Um, uh, what if uh, what is the one thing you'd change if you were starting over again? Um, probably focus 
I think it maybe it's not just unique to me, but I did have, um, you know, I would do anything. I would do everything and anything in mm. the remit. As, as I've gone along, I'm getting more focused, and right. I would have probably started with more focus. Right. Um, but at the beginning, if you don't really know what you're trying to achieve and where you're trying to go to and where you're mm. trying to get to and what yeah. success is, you kind of just scoop anything that's going. Yeah, and, and some people who start <coughs> businesses to actually give themselves a job. Yeah, you know, yeah, there, there's I, a certain I, element of that. Yeah, so. yeah I, I read a, a great book. Um, uh, I think it's the uh, it E-Methyl. Uh, and it was really literally, you know, starting a business, oh, I need a job. I need, yeah. to, I need to pay the bills. Yeah, yeah. And then you kind of, oh, I've got a business, right. Uh, well, now what do I do? You know, yeah. Get some focus. And you know, it talked about employing your first and second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And making sure that you're actually uh, not just handing over, yeah. you know, which is always interesting. Um, <laughs> uh, what's, the, what's the key piece of advice you give to startups? <laughs> I think it's the same focus. Yeah. Really, really go back. Plan on focus. Yeah. Yeah. Plan it out, what, what's important, where you're trying to get to, and focus on that. And, and don't just do anything because it's. It's a paid job. Yeah. Um, it's sometimes hard to say no, but uh, it's a it's a valuable lesson. Sometimes just saying no, mm. I'm not going to do that, or I can't do that, or I haven't got time to do that. Um, We've talked to, uh, about a couple of events and things. Can you name one thing that would that helps local business community? What people should do? It's got to be networking. Yeah. It's actually got to be going out there and meeting people, especially especially on the island, and probably any local yeah. you know, business that's locally based. If you go out there and meet people and talk to people and get to understand them and know their businesses, and we've got some great networking on the island. Yeah. The chamber do regular events, even uh, trade shows. We had Smart Island Live last yeah. week. You know, it's just an opportunity to get out there. And there's so many businesses out there you've never heard of. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, chamber events, LinkedIn local events, um, Cows Business Association. I think there's a Ride one. There's Vectus Business Link. Yeah. There's Island Business Network. So many. Hmm. Um, Networking has to be the one thing I would say too. Sure. And and can you recommend anyone to come on the show and, and tell us about what they do? Um, yeah. Mark Mart. Mark Drake Knight, Rapa Nui. One right. of the owners yes. of Rapa Nui. Yeah. Um, incredibly clever, inspirational guy. If you can if you can if you can, to if you can nail him yeah. down, yeah. he would be a fantastic yeah. guy to I think we'll get, yeah. He's a busy guy. He's, He's a busy a guy busy and guy. prepared to be sitting here for an hour or so. Yeah. Fantastic guy though, very yeah. clever. <coughs> okay. okay. Um, so, final question, um, and this gives you a chance to really s tell people where they can get hold of you. Okay. Um, so, um, what's the best channel to, to find you? Where where do, where do people find you? Where the best, you I guess, the best easiest channel is online, uh, ChrisCourtAssociates.co.uk. Um, if you just Google Chris Court, um, I'm not quite the first one because there's a, a photographer who uh, keeps on popping above me every now and then. <laughs> but uh, never mind. Um, I'm on LinkedIn as well. Um, actively use LinkedIn. Um, where you can also find details about LinkedIn Local Isle of Wight. Yeah. Um, I'm also on Twitter and Facebook as well. But uh, yeah, probably the the website is the is the first port of call. Um, so yeah, so find me there. Great stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, Chris, thank you very much for coming in. No, it's, uh, it's been, been great. It's been great. Uh, it, it, it's always interesting to find out, you know, and it's great actually because it validates what we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But ask Chris. This is free consulting. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you've just you've you've actually just done a workshop with us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, um, no problem. So that, that that so that was Chris Court from uh, Chris Court Associates, uh, specialising in social media and helping from startups to medium sized businesses uh, get you know get access to the digital market, get the benefits of the digital market, and and use those benefits. Um, I'm Alice Dickinson. Uh, this is the Business and Technology Show, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>